Let's pretend that we don't know each other. <laughs> I know that we all really know who everybody else is, but just if I we don't. I don't. I, I always think of myself as inadequate in that respect, you know, as, as the person who doesn't know when everybody else does. So perhaps if we just go round oh, and sense. introduce it, uh, everybody, and then, um, then we'll know uh, who, who everybody is. At least we'll be able to put a name to a face, if not anything more detailed. Um, uh, and we'll end, we'll go around this way, so we'll end up with the with the, the uh, okay. with, with, with the key the key operator today. I, I, I'm I'm John Holford. Uh, I'm professor of adult education and uh, director of whatever this research centre is called. Have the higher ed and adult education what is it? Higher and adult and vocational education research centre, and we have seminars about once a month, and this is one of them. And welcome. Uh, Jen Lee, um, not a professor in the school education. <laughs> uh, yeah, some lecturer here in the school. Uh, work with John mostly in the MA International Higher Education Program. I'm Monica McLean. I'm professor of education in the school. I lead the FD. I'm Anne Kavanagh, and I'm a tutor in Sealy Centre for English Language Education. I'm Howard Stevenson. Uh, I don't need to pretend I don't know people, or I do know people, because I don't know people, because I'm <laughs> relatively new. So I uh, just started uh, last month. So Howard Stevenson, working in leadership. Uh, Jane Tapp. I um, have been working as a lecturer here since September, but before that I was in Have as a PhD student. Oh. And I got the certificate yesterday. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Came <laughs> <laughs> through the post. <laughs> nice. Uh, I'm Mick Kavanagh and I'm also a tutor in Sealy and I teach with Gaoxi on the MA in teaching Chinese. So, yes, I, I'm Gaoxi, so I probably will speak. She will speak. <laughs> can can I say, time, just by way of <laughs> uh, letting you feel entirely free, we're relatively relaxed here, usually, and I always eat my sandwich, and please feel free to, to tuck into yours as well. Do you know there's a sign up there that says, no, it is strictly prohibited to bring any food or drink into this room? No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, I only read it just before the, you all walked in. Right, OK, well, nobody has previously <laughs> brought that to my attention, uh, so um, I'm going to assume that... Uh, well, I am hard of hearing, yes. so... <laughs> so um, anyway... Um, Shin is going, to, is going to speak to us today on is there a Christian approach to English teaching practice? Mm -hmm. And, oh, I should say, explain that part of the background to this is that a long time ago, it seems like 23 years ago, but it's about two years ago, we had a little bit of money left, which we, some of which went to Shin to sort of support some research and, and the kind of, um, you know, she promised to do a, a, a seminar as a result. So that's it. Welcome. Ah, somebody else. Ah. ah. Roger, would you like to introduce yourself, since we're pretending we don't know each other? I'm Roger Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Okay, um, yeah, I was, so actually, basically, uh, I think John just mentioned, just put in something I, I really want to say. Um, yes, so this is small, this tiny, I think it, but this tiny, kind of small. No, no, we're, 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 uh, introduce yourself. It's too late. <laughs> okay, um, I'm Christine, um, second year PhD student. Welcome, welcome. Everybody coming in after this, we won't stop for, but, you know, that's, that's great. Okay, yeah, so, well, basically, I mean, what John just mentioned is something I was about to say. It's really, thank you for Hate Center's support to give me the money to actually um, design and develop and basically conduct this small project. So thank you. So I, I hope that... Um, um, yeah, I'm trying to report what we've been doing, but also uh, it might there, there's some other things I really want to carry on. So probably I think it's mainly to get some some advice and comments by giving this seminar. Right. Um, I think I, I start. I want to start with this question. So, um, but at least I, I think I asked myself many times. So why do I want to be a teacher? Uh, and I think because I, I'm, I'm Christian and also the friend who co-writing the paper, she is, she is a Christian as well. 
I think we, both of us we talked many times, and actually, I think the, I think the, one of the one of the thoughts I had was that many times I realized how I was trying to answer. I feel like my 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 values been changed a lot, and also um, just a lot of things happened in my life since I became an English language teacher. I feel like uh, I, I I did respond differently before and after becoming a Christian. Um, so actually, um, so means that we are um, we are carrying. Well, I trying to use I am <laughs> really trying. Uh, so I, I think I, I'm carrying a dual role as um, both as an English language teacher and a Christian as well. So. Um, I think that really the general question uh, interests me is that how beliefs could or couldn't interact with somebody's English language practice. So I try to put the context to narrow down to English language teaching uh, for some reasons. Um, well, English, it is a subject, um, but also um, I think English is also closely related to its it's culture, it's culture and it's home. So, I mean, for from our pers perspective, so the Britain is actually been has been seen as uh, traditionally it is a Christian country. So basically, spreading the language, I mean, teaching English to second and foreign language speakers um, in some other countries, actually, it also means sharing the the people of the land's culture, ways, and values, and practices, including Christian-based the beliefs and practices. Um, and also, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing is that uh, English has been used as a missionary language in history. So it is, um, and, and also has an ongoing legacy in the promotion of Christian faith. Um, in the world, so so I, I try to put the put the, the the teaching practice in a context of teaching English as a second and foreign languages, and also I try to I think I I'm more or less trying to highlight English has got its own specific role to play. I mean, in internationally. Um, so that's why. Um, I think in the in the previous one of the uh, the ITEFL online forum discussion and people uh, I think they raised the question: Does Christianity um, uh, actually uh, it help to spread um, it help to spread it and also does it link to the uh, to to promote English to, well to make English become an international language or the English, because the English become an international language, actually leads to the to the, to the um, promotion of Christian faith in the world. So they have such kind of, I mean, the the discussion of the relationship between Christianity and English language education has been for for a long time, has been there for a long time. Um, and also, um, I think in my career, not very long, in my, in my journey being a language teacher, I think I was uh, influenced quite a lot, um, but not, not for a long time, but very recently by two books. One is written by Don Snow. It's called Teaching English as Christian Mission. And the other one is, um, is by um, the professors in America, so um, David Smith and Barbara Carfield. They wrote a book. Um, called the gift of the stranger. So basically, um, I think they use the very interesting. They use the metaphor of hospitality to try to suggest uh, a specific diagram for foreign language learning. Um, yeah, I think that's the um, right. So that's a, a bit of a context which I I try to seek my study and also myself in. Uh, in relation to English language education, and this the reason why I I want to do this rather than just leave it, uh, keep it as a personal 
a question or a question or self-reflective uh, thoughts to myself because the study actually was initiated by the three um, ELT scholars, the very well-known scholars. So one of them, Zhong Ting Dong Yan, um, he's my PhD super he was my PhD supervisor. Um, I think in their uh, recent book, they mentioned in various aspects of language learning and teaching, I think people, well, what teachers' beliefs or teachers' values is, it is um, quite, um, quite an interesting area for people trying to uh, investigate. Uh, so, well, so if we talk about the ideological or belief-based claims, um, so how about the role of faith? So where, where is it and how does it play in, the, in language learning or teaching? So that's why they called for uh, adding a new dimension to the topic uh, using some data-driven studies. So it needs some empirical studies to, um, to help people to understand the area, the field. Uh, and also, I think they, they raised the three areas, like a, a range of areas for people, probably people can focus on. So for example, um, such as the Christian faith and language teacher identity, the English language learning con or faith and English language learning context, and also the faith and the language learning or teaching process. So these are the areas and they, they're trying to um, encourage people to, to do more um, empirical studies. And, and also, I, th I think basically try to see if we can bring in any new perspectives on the philosophies, purposes, practices, and theories of the interrelation of Christianity and language learning and teaching. So that's, so basically, uh, I think uh, I was in line with their, their call for developing some empirical studies in this area. Um, right. So about this current, the studies, and I did. Um, I think that the broad, the general research question is, to what extent do Christian English language teachers perceive their faith and values impact upon their daily lives and work? So we want to, uh, to try to, to see the, the connections between between somebody's belief and their, their teaching practice and their um, well, the daily daily work, <coughs> so, and there are a few areas we're trying to work on. So one is about the, the role of faith in practice uh, as a teacher, and how they do or they don't convey Christian culture, beliefs, and values through English English language, and well. I think it's, it's, it's like a, a, always a topic. So as a teacher, I think it's how to become a good teacher. So how about on the journey, what kind of impacts of being Christian may or may not, may not have on um, somebody's journey to become a good teacher? Um, but, so th well, the first the three bullet points actually refers to the areas we want to see if we can we can develop some questions, interview questions to to do some in depth studies. But then, I mean, I think two other aspects, and I was really interested in is that so if we say it is a relationship, does the relationship itself also? Sorry, sorry been characterized by some intertwined or conflicting nature. So what is the nature of the relationship? Um, and also, um, it's something called Christian approach. I'll mention a little bit later when I come to this, uh, the, well, the, the something related to the finding. Um, so is there such a, such a thing called Christian approach? in the actual practice? And if yes, could there be an added value brought about by the Christian approach to English language teaching? 
So I think personally, I was really interested in these two specific questions. Just well, <laughs> uh, that I, I, I want to um, I want to investigate. Um, okay. Right. In terms of the the rail, so so basically, um, but at this stage, I must say, I must admit that we didn't do much literature. I mean, yes, I think I, I, I did quite a lot of reading in terms of in in any of the aspects, well, including the two books and some other articles, well, mainly in within the English language education. So we and then developed this research uh, study. So in the research design itself, um, I think I, I probably want to call it as a narrative inquiry with combined with a grounded theory approach. Um, I think the narrative bit is actually related to the interview questions we developed. So well, again, the focus on, we're trying to make it to cover uh, as broadly as possible, the teachers' lives and work. So that's why we generally divide it into three different areas. And some questions were taken from another, uh, from uh, previous literature. Um, well, in terms of the question itself, is not only include like we ask the people to talk about their uh, their stories and their their life history related to it being or becoming. A language teacher. Um, so well, so, so at the next to the to the uh, to the mark tick is actually uh, is one of the research questions we asked, um, and and also the when I say is it is a narrative. It also because it also have questions related to some critical <coughs> moments and also crucial like uh, like significant figures in their life. So um, these are the well help us to to try to make the interview questions to cover broadly as possible, and also trying to find a way to to give prompt and also probe into somebody's journey of being a, a English language teacher. Um, and then. So the, the or we tried to we actually did it in the different phases. So the first one is is pilot. So yes, so we we had a, a interview schedule ready, and and invited another very experienced Christian English language teacher to give his personal account of his ideas and comments experiences in relation to the nature of the research questions. It was really helpful. So, um, so actually, it helped us to revise and reshape quite a lot in in terms of the research question, and some insights. It helps us to see, well, help us to see basically how we see, how we evaluate the interview questions itself themselves. Um, and data collected in two phases. The first one is. Uh, so we, we, do, we use the very traditional ways of conducting research. So we interview people. Um, I think it's also related because of the nature of the, uh, of the study itself is talking about somebody's belief. So we still think self-report is, is, is one of effective ways of um, collecting data. So we, we still carry on using interviews and to try to get, get some individuals' perspective on related to all the uh, interview questions. Um, and then, so we analyze the results, so individually, so based on the individual's answers. Um, and based on their answers and based on our analysis of the data, we developed another, another set of interview questions. So and then we arrange a focus group discussion with uh, two participants, basically. Um, so we're trying to say if we can get into some some bit further insights concerning the key points highlighted in the initial interviews. Um, so that's why we, we, we're trying to say, it, it, I mean, the, the whole research design we're trying to develop as use, uh, 
like using a grounded theory approach. So trying to allow the data to say if um, to tell us, <coughs> uh, and also to try to, to to allow the data to inform both the coding and also the concept creation. And we use Anvivo to archive the, the, the all the data, all the data. Um, Right, um, and then about the participants themselves. So there are two, not that many, I'm afraid. Uh, yeah. Um, but the, so the two, the both of them are Christian tutors of English to international students in the British University. And the first one, so we use, uh, um, th th that's the name uh, we, we want to use throughout the analysis. So Sophia. Um, she actually, so basically, alternatively attended two different churches, um, but isn't really registered, uh, isn't a registered member of either church. Um, so apart from listening to the, apart from attending the church service, um, she, she she did say she didn't have any other involved. She didn't really involve in any church activities or. She wasn't really active in the in the church community, and she was. Uh, she she grew up in a Christian family, uh, but she converted to Islam, uh, and but then for three years. But then, so now she she became well, she became a Christian again. Um, and another one, Alice. Um, so she is uh, a member of one church and and also participant in the house group Bible studies um, and also regularly she attends some church events and so she is I mean slightly different from the previous uh, the first participant Alice is is quite active in the church uh, community and she also had quite many years of working as an English language teacher trainer uh, in, in other countries and sponsored by Christian Thund uh, Foundation. So that's, the, uh, that's the, what we know during the interview about the, so based on um, the participants telling us the stories about themselves, their experience. So that's the, the profile we're trying to summarize about the two uh, participants. Should I just carry on with <laughs> right. um, I'm not sure whether I should go faster or slower. So. <laughs> How much more have you got to go through? <coughs> not, not much. I think no, no, well, carry on. Um, to take it at your own pace, I think. It, 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 you're doing fine. OK. Uh, I mean, now I introduce the, the research, why I want to do the studies and uh, do the study and also um, how the, the, the framework of the research design was like and we've managed, really thank for the two participants and so we, we, we managed to start something real. <coughs> uh, so the next part, I'm going to tell something about what we find out during the study. Um, I think uh, I think probably because the question it's I mean the question it's themselves are uh, more or less related to people's life that well I mean some people are probably are Christian and some are not or you have some contact with Christian or with people with some faith so I think I asked the question about the uh, the inter the relationship between faith and teaching practice, and in this case, it's a particularly language, English language teaching practice. I think probably you, you more or less have some, uh, have, some, have some sort of guess about the findings, right? So, th th so let's move on to say what I find out, so maybe how different or how similar uh, with what you think about the, the area. Um, the first one is, I think, the, the very um, impressive um, sentence that's been 
been used quite a lot during the interview, in the, uh, actually appeared quite a lot in the interview data, is it shows that, well, the close relationship between both, between the, them as a teacher or between them as a, as a person and their face. So I'm trying to use, so for example, uh, Sophia mentioned that, um, so it plays a key role. Um, and Alice also, um, I think, expressed the, the similar idea. It is central. Um, and also, I mean, Sophia, later on, um, I think it's in the group, uh, in a focus group discussion, actually make it very uh, uh, use the use the use the sentence itself he said uh, it is a compass that directs me and and then she tells that how what she meant by directs me so for example being more reflective um, and also more conscientious because of my belief and my face and and constantly uh, well to check set church it helps her to, to it drives, she said, it drives me to constantly check myself and my teaching. And Alice um, make it very clear, so God has a purpose for me as a teacher. Um, so that's why, um, I mean, I'm just trying to use a few um, um, I think that what they say, um, I mean, the participants' view actually, what, what they tell me is that the Christian faith plays a very strong and central role in both their personal and professional lives of, the, of being, a te being teachers, whether or not they're engaged in the teaching profession. So, so not only <coughs> for, for being, but also, I think it's mainly as a person, it plays a key role. Um, and also, um, the other thing is talking about some in difficult situations. So how they deal, how they cope, and what how, what kind of things help them to cope with difficult or challenging situations. Yeah, this is. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I've got to put the in, in bracket. This is from Alice. She said. Because she uh, she taught she taught English she, she um, abroad for many years and it's uh, most of the time in actually quite rural and uh, the conditions were very bad or very basic and very or living conditions was very poor and she said um, we never feel we miss anything and. Uh, so they, they've been so in a very difficult situation to actually um, carry on with their career for, for years. And they also mentioned in some critical situations. So for example, yes, so this is from Alice as well. It's one they have to do something uh, which she think is actually against her Christian principle and how she react and what she did to um, right. so but yeah so as she said it was my Christian principles that helped that high and I, I didn't give it to that guy's pressure so when they were when they sh when she think is it was morally wrong um, so again the, the participants will actually um, it tells us is that the Christian values are the resources that draw upon uh, when when they really face when they really face with difficult situations. So and also the decisions was usually made, uh, well especially in the critical situations were actually informed informed by their Christian values. So this is, I mean, these are just the two of the number of examples I use. Uh, well. The participants mentioned in the interview. Um, right, 
the other one. It comes to the about the Christian approach. Um, because I I thought about it. Um, I mean, before I actually search for any literature related to this concept, I was thinking if there is a, such a thing called Christian approach or not, and. Um, I think in, probably in the, in the general education uh, literature, there's quite a lot talking about Christian value or the faith value, how it related to teaching practice. Um, but as I said at the beginning, uh, well, the starting point we're trying to make is to act as an insider. So I want to look, I started with the literature in English language education, so in a very specific, uh, narrow, focused um, area. Um, so I find actually Smith, um, so David Smith, um, in one of his articles, he mentioned, he used the, the term Christian approach, uh, but then actually it, 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 it is very theoretical. He, he, he made that point very clearly. He said it, it is a theoretical rather than empirical work, suggests that teachers' Christian faith influences their teaching design and pedagogy, which is, which can be translated into classroom activities, and affects the discussion and interaction between teacher and students. I think basically the message to me is that, um, so that actually I think it's a Christian approach is actually probably is. I mean the nature of it is actually um, something to do with the process of teaching. So rather than teaching in a specific way, so it's very much, uh, it would have some, well, Christian teacher. So based on what I read from in, in his article, I think that's the, uh, um, that's the message um, I got from, from his work. So that's why I think, that's why we put it as a research question and in both the initial and the follow-up um, focus group uh, interviews and with the teachers, we're trying to ask them how they, what they think. Do they think if there is such a, a Christian approach? And if they think there is, what do they mean? I mean, for based on their own teaching practice, what do they mean to them? And also we're trying to ask them to say, okay, if there is a Christian approach, um, do you think it is very different from from like somebody uh, teaching as a voca like vocation? So well, they, they can do very effective teaching. So uh, do they, do you think they are different? <coughs> um, I think the first answer, the first well, uh, we got from is. I mean, Sophia, Sophia was, uh, was the first person to answer, answer the question. She, that's what she said. She said it's, it's uh, the essence of Christianity, it's the relationship between. So if there is a Christian approach, I think that she said the primary focus would be the relationship between teacher and the students. So I think, so probably, um, I think um, based on what she said, I think she's trying to say that the approach would be evident through the relationship, relationship. so how the, the process is actually involved with the, uh, the tutor and student relationship. Um, and again, but that's not the only finding related to, but that wasn't, because uh, we, we were really, we were really in this interest in the topic, so we try to ask the various different uh, questions to try to probe into it and um, and then so so th in terms of the Christian approach I mean the two participants and we're trying to th summarize them to get uh, summarized here is that they actually uh, list down some well actually I hope the list it actually um, is kind of a summary of what they say what the two participants say about what they mean by Christian what, what does the Christian approach actually mean to them and what are the, the features of Christian approach? Um, so, 
I think it's the uh, uh, it's mainly to do like guided by Christian principles, being conscientious, and the reliance on God's strengths, um, and also recognition of own weakness. So that's the um, that's the the aspects been mentioned in the interviews and later on the focus group discussion. Um, I think if we look at uh, how we're trying to summarize and summarize the Christian approach, I think it's, to me it's very much related to Christian value, uh, generally speaking. Um, but also, uh, I think still, maybe pe some people probably still have the question that, well, a good teacher can do this, probably can do, they can, maybe they can also uh, uh, be very conscious and also um, trying to do the right things to the students and so I think that they, well, some people might have, uh, might think or oh, a good teacher should do, do this as well maybe, so it's not really Christian approach specific. I think people might have such a, such kind of questions, uh, but what we find out from in the in the interviews are that. So yes, I think the both participants uh, both mentioned that yes, they, they did say. I mean, the effective teachers and even non Christians, how they see, how they uh, how they want to become. Uh, what do they think is actually what does that well. What a good teacher actually mean to them, uh, so probably the, the some values actually share between both of both Christian and non-Christian teachers. But then the the <coughs> mentions that the main difference is so there are some major differences between um, Christian and non-Christian effective teachers is that I think they talk about the motivation and the strengths. So I think they've been mentioned quite a few times that they said that's the that makes the difference. So for example, Sophia mentioned that um, um, I think it's very much to do her motivation. Uh, yeah, she said I I'm probably gifted in that area, uh, but from a personal perspective, what makes me better at my job is being a Christian. So. And she also emphasized it is just that subtle extra ingredients. So, so I, I think she's trying to uh, say it's a, it is very different. And, and also from Alice, um, what she said is that, um, so the awareness of your motivation for doing things and also the strengths with which you do things. So that's the, uh, well, again, I think both of them actually um, in, in different at different points mentioned about the differences uh, between a Christian and non-Christian teachers. But I must say that I didn't, I mean, all of the research design, we didn't, we didn't want to invite the non-Christian to make some <coughs> comparison. So that wasn't really, so but just a, these are just the comments and also the data really came, came out uh, when we were doing the interviews. Um, Okay, um, right, um, I think that the next, uh, the next area, um, the next topic I, will, I want to talk a little bit is, I hope you, I think it's, it's slightly different from what, what I just mentioned. So I think that the, the previous, uh, the findings or the quotations I showed you, well, I think the message uh, I really want to convey is that there is a very strong connection between their faith and their practice and also being a person. But then they are talking about something else. Uh, I think they mentioned a few times about draw a line. So, so what does that mean? Does that draw a line means in some practice? Or in, do they just try to, to be a different person? Or, <laughs> put their face aside or so it's the uh, we'll, we'll say what they mean by saying to draw a line I 
Um, <coughs> yes, um, I think that the question was asked uh, when we had the, the individual interview was that if there's a, so we, we're trying to put our participant into a quite diff difficult scenario. So for example, in the classroom, if you had a one student really, really uh, question or argue about or say something really very strongly about um, about Christianity of Christians, so how would you react to that? I think that was the scenario, and we're trying to to get and ask the participant if they had a such kind of experience before, if they met such kind of things before, and how did you react to it? So here are the uh, here uh, is actually what Alice told us. Um, I think she she trying to say, um, well, of I think it comes back to the whole thing of respecting differences. So and then she said, uh, uh, it, it is about respecting other people's faith, but also. Um, Yes, but also perhaps making it clear that I'm Christian and this is my view, but I respect your view. So this is the this is how she she answered the question. And and also I think Sophia um, mentioned something similar as well. Um, she said because as a professional, you are expected not to bring in personal. So that's why um, I think later on she said she tried not to use the time in class to. Um, so, so basically. Yeah, she, she will do her do her job um, and rather than yes so here it is so use the time one um, it's an abuse of that position <coughs> as a teacher to use the time when I use when I should be teaching to do that um, um, I think it's uh, so so when I look at this data, I think it's uh, clearly uh, they're trying to say there is time when they want to draw a line. So, um, but I, I didn't put any, <laughs> well, so basically, well, of this part, I think the analysis at this stage are very descriptive. So, <laughs> I, so what, does that, what does it tell us? Um, well, I think the message is very clear. So they would they acknowledge the need to draw a line between teaching and sharing the Christ, Christian gospel. Um, I, I still have the question. So where? So where? How people? I mean, if there's a part of their beliefs and how? And uh, I mean, the in terms of the, those beliefs and actions. So where is the point to be very conscious that is the is the time to draw the line? So I, I still have this, uh, which is the, I mean, when we did the interview, so probably it's the, it's the well, we'll have a, need another time to go back to, to the participants and to, to get some further ideas. Um, so I wasn't clear how to, so it's very, very descriptive when I um, write down and trying to write something on this part. Uh, so, okay, um, I want to, to, I just put together a few, so, well, I think so far I use quite a lot of quotations from the participants, um, basically trying to say, <laughs> it's not something I said, it's what I learned from my participants, how they view uh, their faith and how they view the relationship between their faith and the practice. And, and here at this point, I'm just trying to summarize uh, a few a few things um, um, which, which I think is help a lot to answer the research questions. So the first one is, um, so the results actually told us, so being a Christian is a significant aspect of their identity. And, and also the, the, two, the two Christian tutors, both of them express the, the crucial said that the, it is a, a crucial importance of their faith and relationship with God, with God in every aspect of their lives and so including their profession as English, English language teachers. 
Uh, so in this connection, so Christian values tend to develop people's character and also help them, especially when they need to make decisions, minor or major. So the faith also serves as a standard in guiding them to live a life. And, and also as highlighted by the participants, that the faith, uh, well, I, I use it in the previous um, PowerPoint slide, it is a personal compass for Christian living and influencing all aspects of their lives. Um, so that's why uh, we said separating um, the tutors, uh, Christian faith, beliefs from how they approach life is not just difficult, but in fact impossible. So I think it's been, so basically the study confirmed something I learned from the literature. So there is very strong connections between personal, between belief and their profession. And, and, and also, I think the next thing is that how they see teaching, how they see their profession. Um, so they see it teaching. Uh, I mean, I think I asked the question broadly at the very beginning, so why do I want to become a teacher? I think probably every day has got a very different answers. I mean, these are the answers from the two participants, two Christian participants, they said that teaching they really, well, especially English language teaching, they, they see it as a form of service to God. And so, so that's why the, the passion for teaching is actually fueled by their Christian faith and, and also for the benefits of the learners. I, I, I didn't really, um, but I think they mentioned quite a lot about how they, what they do with the students actually, but just I, I, I didn't do any specific uh, headings using it, but. Um, but I, I have quite a lot of data, um, so that's why. Um, so that's the. Um, so that's all of this actually. Um, in a ways to help to formulate their views of a Christian approach to English language teaching. So that's how they see what Christian Christian approach to English language teaching actually mean. Um, uh, the reason why uh, I keep saying it is work in progress uh, because there is uh, some some reasons. So that's why I think, well, I think the reason why I, I want to give the this, give this presentation. The first thing is really thank the center to sponsor this project. But the other reason is I, I think here is uh, is another major reason is that I do have some questions. I hope that we can. <laughs> that would be really helpful if I can get some, some answers or some comments. So that's related to the work in progress. Uh, I think the first one is that, um, I mean, based on the, I mean, the first, uh, the first round of data analysis is very, to me, is very descriptive. Um, and also, because we had a, well, basically, the, the analysis was directed by the, was driven by the research questions. So, for example, I want to look at, okay, how the role of faith in their profession, the role of faith in their life, how, how, they, how they see on their journey to become a good teacher, or the, or the impact of faith on themselves, on their practice. So, the, it's basically, a, it's, it's a theme or the research question driven journey doing, of doing the analysis. But then I still have these questions and I, I think I really need to go to the data again. Uh, one is that, and coming to this point, I think more or less I've got what I really want to, I mean, the descriptive analysis, it told me a lot about well, how to answer the research question. But then, I mean, something else came up to my mind. Uh, I think the, the first one, it's actually uh, it's something I'm thinking now. So when is that any tension? Well, because well, we have two, two participants. So is there any differences between them? So I want to look across the data to say any differences? And, and also of the one person's, um, like of in one interview, well, two interviews with one person, for example, is there any conflicts? Um, means that, or is there any generally is there any tension 
well, in the data can tell us about the about the, this research topic or about the participants. So, um, so that's something I want to do further. But then the next thing uh, I'm thinking is that, um, well, I think of the research design, it looks, it, it become well. Although we use different methods, but I still can see it is quite thin because. Uh, well, the original idea was having was to have students' perspective. So we want to have the, the tutors, but also the students. Um, well, that's the that's the original design. But just we, we didn't really, I didn't manage to get any student participants. It was the problem. <laughs> and also, I think it's to do with the the arrangement of the program because it's very intensive. So usually students would be here with the same teacher for about a month, maybe four weeks to to ten weeks, and they will they will disappear, and then they will come to do their their, their subjects. So it's uh, so for various reasons, and um, I didn't get the students' uh, perspective on this on how they see about the, the teachers, how they see about the teachers, and also whether what the teachers expressed, the, the attitudes and their beliefs have been translated into their teaching. And so it's a, it, it, there, there was the possibility, but just that we, we, I didn't have the data to tell that. And then the next thing is that, because this, is, this is topic is generally about belief. So uh, I think at the beginning, I know that I would use some self-reports methods to collect the data for sure um, but then at a certain point I wonder whether the belief would tell I mean data would become really become very richer if we have something from the action or from the practice so is there I mean well the, the research topic would would be the same so it's under somebody's belief but I wonder whether any data from the, the action perspective, from the practice about the, what they, they are doing, how they would help to interpret what they believe, help to interpret the, re, the research, uh, the, the, the data, and also it therefore to answer the research question or not. So I still have the question. Um, and also if, if the, it is necessary, uh, if it would be useful, so what kind of uh, methods could be used to record somebody's teaching practice or what they are doing. Is it classroom observation, or if it's observation, um, is it one-off, or I should do an uh, ethnographic? But then the question comes back because it's about somebody's belief. So if I observe about the behavior, would that really tell me something about what what people believe? So I never really, um, this is the first time to do a topic on, 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 on belief. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, uh, so I'm, I'm still, I still struggle how to, to justify and, and also how to see whether I should use different methods and to collect the different sets of data in order to increase the, the power of interpreting the data or not. So. Um, and then the next thing is, I think I, I put on the first PowerPoint slide. So basically, how I place myself is that very much as an insider. Because um, I, I am a Christian, and I am in the English language practice. And all the literature I read is from English language education. So that's why, uh, but then I think really coming to, because I have some questions I can't really answer. Well, based on my experience and also read the literature within this uh, this area, so that's why I think probably I should go beyond all uh, this difference and to to try to be an outsider. I mean, to say if one of being one of the idea of how to for me is that I can think about is how to be an outsider is to read broadly, see what has been told and what 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 has been done in terms of talking about the Christian value, or if there's something in the broader literature talking about the Christian approach, and also how 
other people in the different areas how they see uh, English language education and language education practice. So, yeah, so that's. <laughs> Yeah, Thank you very much. You know, mm -hmm. You've given us a lot of food for thought there. So, um, <laughs> we're, now, we're now open to discussion, questions, challenge, endorsement, <laughs> um, exploration. Monica. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought it, it was really interesting, but it, it, what it made me think is whether whether the issue isn't Christian beliefs, but whether the question is whether any people who are, if you, I mean, the question is any people who, who have hold strong beliefs mm. Mm. or principles inspired by religion or any other ideology, even in its politics, make more conscientious and resilient teachers because mm. it was very much that makes me, that makes me mm. very, very careful and it helps me deal That's with the difficult times was yeah. the main message, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So whether the question could be, yeah. and it is an interesting question whether actually people mm. who do have very strong beliefs, but it but doesn't seem to me that it matters terribly whether it's Christian yes. or, mm. you know, humanist or Marxist or Muslim mm. or, mm. but it drives them because they believe in it. Because I, I was, um, you know, when we first saw topic, I was kind of expecting because you've been talking about the, the, the strong connection between Christian and English language. So mm. I was kind of uh, expecting something come out from your finding, for example, when people mm. talk about the, 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 the by, you know, being a Christian uh, through their teaching practice, spread the language or the culture, or, you know, of uh, English. Because um, mm. it just occurred to me that it was the significance there. Um, it's a similar kind of, you know, question as a, um, Monica raised because I think you know there's a commission sent by Christine Wood to outside for centuries already but then English wasn't become a global language till until last century so it was not I, I don't see it as a the, this power is come from the religion or the you know commissioner effort uh, I see it more as the the power of economic, the rise of America, where the, the English become a global language. And in fact, I think now, if you look the country who send the most uh, commission to uh, to overseas, it's not any of the English speaking country. It's uh, South Korea. Very surprising, isn't it? I, that's something I read, you know, some some time ago. But I don't know if that changed now. So my point is. Um, it's under current, you know, this globalization or this context, very, very difficult to draw a line in the physical or sort of uh, language, you know, to say this is Christian word, only, you know, mostly in uh, English speaking countries. But now it's as easily you can be a Zen Buddhist in San Francisco as easy as in Japan, for example. So I think my question is just what you kind of, you know, to establish the rationale of why you focus on English language teaching, you know, and whether this belief of Christian is um, something, yes. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I think the, um, I mean, when I talk about English and Christianity, uh, I think that the, I, I really, uh, mm. I think the, the major message is that, so English is as a, as a subject, I mean, we're talking about teaching English as a second of foreign languages. So we, we, we actually treat it as a subject, uh, I mean, yeah. especially to English, teaching English to international students or teaching English in other countries. Yeah. So uh, I think I, I don't want to say uh, it is, well, English actually, well, internationalization actually driven by in spreading. No, 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 yeah. So it's, uh, I think, well, international must be, there must be various, m numerous other factors being uh, like the com well combined different factors then they, uh, globally and then it, it come to the, the stage that okay well English become an international language uh, I think mainly um, I want to say is that English has got a its own very unique history as a subject so I mean for to me is that it, it had some as a language itself it had some some connections with how the Christianity and how people as a use as a missionary language uh, use that. So this is the uh, I think it's a it's a way of saying 
it's, it's one of the ways saying English as uh, English in terms of English language teaching. I mean, English as an international language is, uh, well, to me, is that if I really want to categorize, uh, I think so. So basically, that's the perspective I started to talk about English language education. But then people can have other different perspectives mm. of English language education. So for example, English mm. as an international. But in this case, so English for years, for it has a long history and still is going on, is that it's been used as the missionary language. <coughs> And also, so a lot of teachers, especially the teachers being sent abroad, is, is actually, they're Christian, so they're on Christian uh, missionary. So that's the, uh, so that's just one way of, it doesn't, uh, I didn't mean to tell the whole picture about how English language education mean to the world and to the, the people in the profession. That's cute, let's, let's hold it. We've got several, lots of people trying to get in. So <laughs> one, two, three. I think the uh, the point <coughs> that already been raised are uh, critical to, mm. uh, to to reflect upon in in writing this research. <coughs> uh, the Monica's point, sorry, <coughs> Monica's point um, reflects, you know. Um, it reminds me of a friend who's a Muslim who was teaching for a decade, over a decade in a Muslim school, and then moved to teach language, French language, in a Catholic school. And she said, "I couldn't find, a, I couldn't uh, feel the difference. I, I'm feeling like I am in a Muslim school, uh, other than um, the principles of faith, which are uh, different. What well, doesn't bother me about there are lots of things which I find myself as a Muslim school, rather than I was teaching in a, a normal state uh, school." Critical normal, but I mean the mainstream um, uh, school. So this is a point to reflect upon about the general values rather than the, the faith. The other thing is about access, and I I see the problem of access there. What about social media? If we have uh, one month, can we actually build links with those students and then follow up those links to have uh, further uh, like folks groups on using social media? Because it would be very interesting to have folks group two folks group. I feel. Oh, is it enough to bring up a hot, you know, kind of discussion and challenging perspectives within the group? So uh, inside and outside as well, I would raise that um, uh, because um, having my PhD as a Muslim uh, female in um, in Muslim schools, um, I reflect a lot about this insider and outsider. Surprisingly, I found myself as outsider in some Muslim schools and some um, some uh, um, Catholic um, and other Christian um, as teachers. They were considered themselves as insiders in the Muslim school and they knew more than I, I did. So here actually challenged my view that I am an insider because I found myself in places as insider and places as outsider. So in this case as well, I think is the insider taking it like this as straight as insider. I think that needs some reflection, but it's very interesting topic mm -hmm. to think about. Lots of food for thought as <coughs> shall, shall we just take take the contributions and then ask you to you to sort of oh. come back? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, rather, rather than responding to it, I, I, I'm I'm open, but it seems we'll get a better conversation yeah, yeah, going if we. Yeah. Um, well, I was I was reflecting on your questions as well about you know, other data, the student perspective in ethnographic classroom observation. And and the problem is that your your interviewees themselves acknowledged that then probably don't look very different from anyone else in the classroom. You know, that's the problem because what's what's drive you know, the, the key factors you said were um, motivation mm -hmm. and where they kind of draw their strength from. Mm -hmm. And those things are not going to be probably, I would say, no, visible no, in, in the classroom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but then, in a way, you've got a double problem because interviewing them, mm. you're getting, if you like, um, sort of almost the expected answers. You know, Christians, like any other community of practice, have a way of talking and a way of expressing their selves and selves and their beliefs. And, you know, Christian way of talking is to say, God informs every aspect of my life. I do this because of, you know, I want to please God. And, and it's very hard to step out of that. If you are being interviewed as a Christian, it's very hard to step out of that and say, actually, but sometimes I just feel really fed up. And I, you know, <laughs> because you're representing, because yeah. a researcher is asking you to represent the yeah. Christian faith. Mm -hmm. So yes. I'm, I, I think you've got a kind of double bind. I don't know how you actually get at the thing you're wanting to look at, which is actually their belief and their strength and their motivation, because that's, they're only going to tell you almost the 
accepted yeah. answer. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I'm not, which is not to say that your your participants are lying, but that within that context, how could they answer any differently? Except there are some. Just sorry, there is some concrete example, isn't there, in terms of faith and you know somebody who who works for years. Mm -hmm in really difficult conditions. Well, does only certain kinds of people with particularly strong beliefs and motivations do that? That's a concrete example. Mm -hmm. Yes, the that is was, of the one who, who yeah. put all that privation in, in yeah. whatever country it was yes, and, exactly. and had, had to put up with no heat. For many, many years, thing. not just for a year. Yes. So, that, that, so that's yes. a kind of, a particular kind of um, dedication, if you like, to a particular kind of work. Yes. So you might get at those kind of you know, life real life. It's almost life history rather yes. than... Yes. Yeah. Because if you say to a Christian, what drives you, they'll say God. I yeah, mean, but I mean, yeah. I, my, my argument is, you know, somebody else could have done that. Or yes. Or, you know, or, yeah, or yeah. some yeah. other... Yes, exactly. Yeah. Roger. Yeah, I mean, lots of interesting thoughts. And, uh, <laughs> so I, I, suppose I'm, I think I'm agreeing with quite a lot of what's being said in terms of getting a good angle on the things that you're interested in and this and maybe broadening it to look at value positions and how they motivate teachers and how they influence curriculum. I like the idea of some sort of ethnographic classroom work, probably starting from the point of view of, I don't know anything about this teacher, but I'm just looking at these different classrooms and wondering whether some of the things that go on in the classroom can be explained through the ideology, the faith, the politics of, of the person teaching, I suppose, and the, and the learners as well. Because um, it seems to me so much of education has been ideologically motivated, hasn't it? Where, wherever you look at education, people are usually trying to um, convey some kind of idea. Even the debate at the moment about the national curriculum here in the UK, you know, as people are saying, the Secretary of State, Michael Gove, is far outstepping his position by really trying to rewrite history curriculum and all sorts of curriculum to bring in sort of right-wing conservative ideology. So so the sort of scrambled thoughts there, but yeah, something about values, something about looking at classrooms. Yeah. And there were two, two other things that came to mind that I wondered if you knew about. So the English department here at Nottingham University, I know did some work about the role of Christian heritage in, in um, the development of English as a subject and the yeah. teaching of English. I can't remember the name of the person, but they had a joint project with Durham University. So if you haven't looked at that, that might be interesting. And, th and another thought is that in Nottingham, there's something called the Stapleford Centre, which is a Christian, it's, it's a residential centre for the Association of Christian Teachers. And they've done quite a lot of work on developing curriculum materials in different parts of the uh, curriculum, particularly for use by people who regard themselves as, as Christians. And so looking at some of those curriculum materials, saying, well, what was it? They felt they needed to do to make you know this curriculum material more mm. Christian would be interesting as well. Yeah. I can I can give you more information on this. Yeah. I, I mean, if I if I can abuse my position and, and just sort of say bring in one or two things. I mean, I, I was really. I mean, I, I go along with some of the points about about the. Um, this is this is attached to maybe a lot of this is attached to belief and, and you know conviction ar around a particular belief regardless of the of the general of what the belief is but having said that um, why in that case do different or have re different religions fought so vigorously against other other religions coming into the educational process I, th I think I mean, you, we've got it now with all the stuff about should there be Muslim schools, should there, and so on. You had in the 19th century within Christian denominations here, you know, should there be non Church of England schools? Absolutely not. Should the Roman Catholics be allowed to have schools? Absolutely not. Well, if there isn't something in that, you know, so, so there's that. Secondly, I, I sort of thought, well, so that, that led me on to what is, what is this kind of notion of Christianity that that you're using. I mean, it, can we talk about a Christian teacher, you know, when there is such a wide spectrum of Christian mm. belief and practice, you know, are they, are they actually, you know, when you, when you get a, a you, you know, you know, you know what I mean. Mm. There's, there, yeah. And I mean, it, that's true now, but it's also, it also becomes true if you look back historically. I mean, Christian uh, belief clearly has varied a lot over time. Yeah. And, 
you know, so I think of, I, mean, I suppose, one image of a Christian teacher of, say, the 19th century might be of, you know, a, uh, a cleric standing in front of the class and, and conducting a sermon, you know, in effect. Now, I mean, now, so is there something about pedagogy which is attached to, you know, the practice of Christian uh, worship, you know, all, all that sort of stuff, which, which plays into it in some way. So, for example, to, you know, you have very different uh, forms of, uh, of Christian worship in different mm -hmm. churches and so on. Does that in, in some way in play into the way in which they relate to mm -hmm. people in the class and so on? And I, I, I suppose the, th the third thought that came to me was just out of, uh, if you look at, uh, was that clearly, uh, I mean, I think as Roger said, I mean, Christians have believed over the years that what they do is, that, sorry, that education is particularly related in some way to what they do. You know, that, that there is something that makes Christianity kind of, uh, that makes education one of the important things that, that Christians should do. And you can see you can see that in all kinds of um, of uh, writing about this over over the years. And I, I, the one that comes to me, being an adult educator, is uh, is the work of William Temple in, in the early twentieth century as kind of archbishop, but very very involved in adult education. And it was it was I mean, without being in any way a sort of what's the word proselyte? It's not a proselyte. What's the word? Um, yes, a, it is. It is. It is. Anyway, that kind of you know, he he wasn't somebody anyway who would stand up in front and, and say, you know, well, I mean, he was a he obviously he was a um, you know a bishop and all the rest of it, so he preached. But in, in his educational practice, that wasn't what he would do. But nevertheless, he felt that that Christian purpose was really important to why he was a teacher, why he thought education mattered, and so on. So I mean, there is something in in in, in what you're looking at. It's just. It's, it's, it's complicated, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a noun? Proselytize. Yeah. You can proselytize, but I'm not sure whether you can be a proselyte. That's proselytizer. Proselytizer, maybe. Yes. Yeah. And doesn't the whole discussion also join up with this debate about the internationalisation of education, and you know, here in Nottingham, yes. yeah. higher education? You know, when when you start exporting. Mm. Education, yeah, and, you know, there's, there's so much culture mm. yeah. and perhaps values and mm. ideology in it. And, 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 yeah. and even, even, is there some, I mean, when you speak about the English language, I mean, I could believe that there are, you know, there are things that it's very difficult to express in English without expressing it in language which is sort of full of religious and, pro mm. and Christian mm. meanings, mm. Uh, I, I, I suspect, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and proverbs and all that yeah. kind of stuff. That's what the English department work was very much about, was sort of saying people, if you're reading, say, literature in English and you don't know anything about Christian heritage, then you're really going to struggle with some of the analogies and the metaphor and all of that. Did you say something else that would be interesting? Would be because, because you are looking at Christianity and you are looking at English language teaching mm. is to take it, you know, to a completely different context. You know, look in somewhere like India, where there is a quite a large Christian community, mm. who may also be teaching English, yeah. but the culture is very, very different. Mm. And yeah. because you know, you're, we're looking at sort of different, we're, we're sort of saying that the culture is bound up in the language and is bound up in the um, in, in the Judeo-Christian back, Christian background, mm. and yet if you took it to another country where you, you had sort of the same language and the same religion but is it still is it exactly in that context is mm. is it played out very differently I don't I don't know but there is still the issue that Jane pointed to isn't that in the, your data there is no evidence at all that the actual teaching no. there is such a thing as a Christian approach yeah that, that, that yes they think it makes them more conscientious and yes they think it helps mm. them be resilient and, yeah. but actually no it doesn't really make any difference to their actual practices exactly sorry right well sorry I, I won't I it, it just uh, reminds some uh, something in a data you know? mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, yeah it tells about uh, I think they mentioned about the selecting material Okay, so there was a bit of evidence yes. that they did do select different material because they were Christian. Okay, so, but that didn't come out here at all. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, basically it's like, no, we, we draw a line between... Yes. 
I mean, prototyping. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, and, um, as a, yes, and teaching crude, crude, I mean, crudely, you might, I suppose I could imagine you might choose a, a case, uh, an example, which is about people getting on rather than people get it going to war with each other or something. I mean, like, you know, that would be a kind of simplistic message, wouldn't it? Well, a simplistic way in which you might, as it were, doctor your, your examples of some, doctor your examples, that's the wrong term, isn't it? But choose your examples to, in, in the light of your but again, particular... Again, and anybody who was peaceful, who <laughs> <laughs> yes, believed in yeah, peace, yeah, it would, would choose that example yes. rather than the other. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting here when you talk about pedagogy because I was thinking about that. It just how how much there is an influence between the um, theory of, if I say, the theory that they um, rely upon in, the, in their teaching or theories and and their own faith, and um, how they be, the two. I guess, uh, interact with each other in their teaching practice. And, uh, and that's not something I want to touch upon as well. Mm. Yes, I, I mean, it's, uh, just, just to throw in one or two thoughts, I mean, one <coughs> is that, you know, um, Monica mentioned. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I'm not good on names. Monica mentioned, mentioned Marxism. And that brought me back to Freire, who is, of course, both you know strongly both Marxist and That's Christian. Yes, you know, yes, so so they they yes. both they're both. Now, how does that affect? You know, and, mm. and the thing that Marx Freire is is a, is one of the things is a pedagogy. Mm. You know, um, so where does that play into all, all this? And how how does one? You know, so is there something which is pedagogically, yeah. as it were, I don't know, authentic to to um, to Christian? Mm. So of course, his case, it, it, it was to do with focusing on oppressed people, wasn't it, and getting them to think about their own conditions, where actually, actually, the one thing that did come out here is they're saying, well, what would make it very special is that we will always look at that kind of relationship between teacher and tutor, which is a very different, it's a kind of authoritarian thing than Friere, who will say, you know, I want you to work together and to get, get to understand your, the, your own conditions of oppression. Yes. So the pedagogy could look very different, and it is driven by belief, mm. but yeah. not as clear cut as Christian or no. No. Muslim no. or Buddhist. Because, or, yeah. because the Christian it's, brothers who would yes. see you know, their their role to beat badness out of absolutely yes. boys yeah. really would hard, also be yes. doing that with yeah. a Christian philosophy. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's right. So, yes, they would. Yeah, no, I was thinking about your peace thing. I mean, it depends on the type of Christian. I mean, yeah. It's like yes. Ian Paisley. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Be probably it, more into war than this. So exactly, <laughs> it's peaceful people of war. Yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. But uh, another, another, just another thought that came to mind was, you know, you've got this English language bit in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, in, you know, and you, we write, uh, rightly say about the way, the role of English and the way in which English has been attached to all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, uh, thinking of you, Chinese language. Mm -hmm. Now, Chinese language is, is now, you know, being taught abroad mm -hmm. uh, quite a lot. Um, is there? How would the role of English language in the teaching of Chinese? Sorry, the role of Christian <laughs> of Christianity, <laughs> the role of Christianity in the teaching of Chinese uh, differ from the role of Christianity in the, in the teaching of English. You know, so so I mean, I'm just thinking about angles you might get on that. Um, you know, so would you find if you if you talk to people who were teaching Chinese? You know, as a foreign language, as it were, and teaching English, would they, uh, and they were both Christians, would they feel a different relationship to what they were doing, or would they feel actually the, an identical relationship? Yeah. I mean, there is, isn't I mean, you mentioned the missionaries and the English, and, but, you know, for a lot of us, that's more like a kind of history of shame than, than, than <laughs> celebration, you know, kind of well, going... Well, Mo Monica is our militant atheist, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> it's so bound up in, in It's bound up with colonialism yes. and yes. going yes. and kind yeah. of imposing ways yeah. of being and imposing. So, you know, you know, yeah, you feel kind of bad about it, not well, kind of. Yes. No, I, I took a bit from the writing, so mm. that's the. I mean, the, the, the clothing so actually was in in the writing. So I took the bit talking about the, the as a missionary mm. language. Yes, for the, yes, but but it will raise feelings of whoa, you know, this is yes. not something we want to kind of celebrate, you know, um, post-colonial. Yes, yeah. <laughs> in a post-colonial era, exactly. Yes. Just behind you, we're. Oh. Yeah, I do. I do acknowledge what Monica said about um, you know this sort of um, more negative 
uh, impact that we've seen uh, uh, through uh, missionary work uh, uh, and how it's bound up with uh, colonialization uh, yeah but there's also I've seen um, and it's not talked about very much I think is also the preservation of, uh, of certain ethnic languages for example in China the the Miao and ethnic group where they didn't have a written uh, a written language and it was through the work of a, a British uh, missionary in uh, among this group of people where um, this Miao language is preserved till today because of uh, because he in order to teach um, you know um, the Bible and Christianity mm. he actually developed uh, a script the Miao script that preserved mm. uh, the language of Miao to, to today so I think you know it's, it's not just um, there's that as well. So, yeah. And I, I just want to also make a point. Uh, I agree with uh, some some that have been raised already about uh, your participants. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're going to recruit more participants, mm -hmm. so how do you decide whether somebody that participant is a Christian? So what are the sort of criteria for you know like? How Such have you known? Uh, again, very broadly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the question. Yeah, yeah. 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 I thought about at the uh, very beginning. Before, yeah. Because um, I, I know, like, because I know also it's like some people who have um, uh, who are planning or who are, who have gone to various uh, like less developed countries to actually teach English. A lot of them. Uh, because my, my previous job, um, I was uh, an English language teacher, mm -hmm. and so I, I, I have actually met quite a number of people uh, who went into this profession because of their Christian faith. Um, mm -hmm. And I, what I want to say, I guess, is that um, for the people that I've met uh, in, in the course of my uh, career, whether they're English language teachers or missionary working abroad, mm -hmm. they they try as much as possible to actually learn the local language and the culture and so they're not uh, from, from my perspective they're not really trying to impose sort of this British or American you know uh, culture or mm -hmm. impose uh, on, on the locals that's my perspective mm -hmm. and you know they try as much to immerse themselves actually in mm -hmm. that culture and I know a lot of like the Christian organizations that send these teachers out they actually uh, train, give them, uh, fund them in language training and to understand the culture of, of that, mm -hmm. whichever destination you're going to. Mm -hmm. yeah, that helps. Shin, I think we should give you the, the final word. So we're coming up to two o'clock, so whatever you would like to say in response. If anything. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I think the, I think the, I think the most thing I really want to say is that uh, I'm so glad I come to to give the presentation, and, and also I strongly feel that I should have done it much earlier because it's been postponed once, and I, I did feel I wasn't ready. And, and, and then I mean, because all the all the notes I made, and also I know that some other things that we can discuss later with with friends or people, I think this are really fruitful and very very helpful to me. So thank you so, so much. Not really for this particular piece of research, but also how to see research and do research, and also how to, well, so it's, it's, it's great. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Very interesting question. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, oh, we meet again in mid-May. I'm not quite sure what we're doing now. But, uh, I think we miss out on April. I'll see you next Tuesday. Uh, Thank you very much for the work. Okay. Okay. Great.